Hey guys, welcome back to the 10 Scale Adventures Workbench, and today I'm going to tear into my K5. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to the 10 Scale Adventures Workbench, and I'm super excited for today. Um, I've been working on this project for a while to get to where I'm at. And at this point, you might be wondering, well, where am I? Uh, sitting in front of me here, I have my RC four-wheel drive K5, and this there was a gnat. But anyway, like I was saying, RC four-wheel drive K5. Um, this is a complete truck that is a driver. It works. It's fully assembled. I've had it out on the trail, but today I'm going to tear it apart in an opportunity or a chance or an experiment for something new, and that is to put in a VFD conversion. That's right, the same conversion kit that I did for the Pink Power TF2 that I'm building for my wife, I did that same setup here to put into my K5. This one's on leaf springs, and I haven't even tried this yet. I don't know if I'm gonna run into problems with doing this installation on this truck, um, but that aside, I'm gonna do it all here on video for you to see. Uh, not gonna make you sit around and watch me do it, in real time because this could take a while so I'm gonna take this video and I'm gonna post process it in the next half hour hour two hours whatever it is I'm gonna speed it all up and see if we can get it all into uh, less than five minutes in high speed for you any major problems I run into obviously I'll slow it down and I'll tell you about them uh, with that said here we go guys check it out that went the teardown went really quick um, obviously when I speed this up that's probably gonna be like I don't know 30 seconds to a minute to tear that down if I look at my clock here um, I'm at nine minutes on the clock and that's not even the actual full video length so that was maybe a total of five minutes or so to tear this down and get everything out of the way that I wanted to take out now as you can see this truck was equipped with an R4 scale trans with an LS style motor that's got a, uh, a belt dripping uh, centrifugal supercharger on it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this was a pretty neat setup. But again, the limitation here was the R4 style uh, transmission that houses the motor inside the actual scale motor. And this here is gonna trap a lot of heat and it limits my motor options for this setup. Uh, so this is coming out and it's gonna be replaced with this setup. Now this setup, as we talk, as I talked about in the Pink Power uh, video with the TF2 that's being built for my wife, how it puts the motor down here along the bottom, allowing the motor to be ventilated and also increases the variety of motors that I can use in this application. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and start getting this installed. I did see one spot that I might have an issue is I think that there's a possibility that I might have an interference issue right in the center of this area over the uh, tail shaft of the transfer case. But we won't know until that gets ready to get installed back into the truck. So let me get the workbench cleared off of everything that got taken out of the truck and we'll get the install underway.
Okay guys, check it out. I've run into a slight snag that I wasn't expecting, and I'm sure it can be overcome. But this little button head bolt right there, which holds the body mount member in place, is interfering with the side of the transfer case. So, I'm going to see if I can swap that out with a different bolt that will allow the motor and transfer case to drop in properly and come up with a quick solution for that. There you have it. Um, I did run into that one snag right there with installing the uh, the button head screw that was used to install this body mount post here. Uh, that I switched out for a a countersink, as you can see right there. See if I can get it to focus on that. Uh, no, maybe not really. Move that out of the way. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Um, switched it out for a countersink screw and. If you actually took the chassis rails apart and you use a, a countersink like this on a drill, it would be really easy to put a countersink in there. Um, as you saw in the high speed, I actually just took this uh, by hand and spun it enough that it gave me just a little bit of a tapered seat on that. The, and that screw now mounts in, mounts in flush enough for everything to go into place. As you can see right in there, kind of. There's not quite enough light here for you to see it. Eh, if I can even point to it, right there. So if there's enough light for you to see it, you can see that that screw head right there, it's a really tight fit with the transfer case. But if you actually gave that a, a, a full countersink, um, it would fit in there just fine. Everything else mounted in place, except for the one piece that I was a little concerned with, which is the battery tray. Um, the battery tray does interfere with the transfer case and it interferes, let's see if I can show you. So it interferes with this tab here on the top of the transfer case. Let's see if you can see that. It's right there. It's kind of hard with the black on black, but it interferes with that tab and it interferes with the top of the tail shaft. Um, the solution to fix that's actually, I mean, it's its going to be really easy. All I have to do is take and uh, notch the battery tray a little bit up in this region right up in from here to about here. Just notch it down um, and this battery tray will drop right back in where it's supposed to. And notching that out for me won't be an issue. I actually don't use those Velcro, the slots that are in there that are I go, probably there for Velcro straps. Um, but I use Duralock to hold my battery in and I do it all the way at the very back edge of the tray uh, for clearance reasons on the battery that I use and convenience of location and just how everything fits. That's where I like it. Um, if you're using that area of your battery tray and you wanted to do this conversion, you might have to reconfigure or move some stuff around. Um, but so I'll go ahead and I'll get that done off camera, get that notched out and then get that installed get the drive shafts in uh, and uh, then we'll do a recap after I get that stuff in and we'll see how close this is to fitting with the interior because I'm actually not too sure about that yet. The interior might need a whole new tunnel. Um, that's a whole different uh, set of challenges to be attacked. And I'm also going to reorganize the electronics off camera. I'm going to take the receiver setup that's back here in this box 
and move it up here into the new receiver box that'll be under the hood, more convenient to get to. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, I might rearrange a few other things, get a few things actually mounted in place, and then uh, get back on camera here and show you where it worked out. Uh, if you didn't notice, I did have a, a scale exhaust set up in here as well. And now that I'm looking at that, I will probably have to reroute my scale exhaust. I don't know that I'll be able to keep that going the, the route that it was. But that's no big deal that's just a little detail piece um, that can be added or changed later on so i'm not going to worry about that and then uh, i've also got my sensor wire that i have to figure out how i'm going to route that in place as well um, the motor of choice for this rig is a homes hobbies polar pro 2200 kv stubby and i'm going to be running that with a mamba micro um, and then i'm also running an ec a back on this truck an external back that powers everything else and then uh, in a following video, I will actually show you how I'm going to hook up my winch because there's not a winch controller in this truck yet. And I'm going to do something that hopefully will inspire you to utilize more parts that you have laying around versus having to go buy something that is uh, specifically meant for the purpose in which you it, it says it's for. Because I'm not going to be powering my winch with a uh, typical winch controller. And, uh, but yeah, we'll get into that in the following video. Um, for now, I uh, will uh, buzz out, get this fixed, and be back in a flash. All right, guys, there it is, all nice and cut. See if I can get it. Yep, that little notch. Turns out that's all it needs. It doesn't actually need that other area over here by the uh, Velcro loop actually cut out. Uh, once the tray drops down, it slides under that tab on the transmission case. So here we go, we're going to uh, finish the assembly, get the drive shafts in, uh, shift some electronics around, and uh, hopefully that'll be it, and we won't have any more issues. Well guys, it looks like that's about as much as I'm actually going to get done on video tonight. Uh, I've got a few things i got to figure out with the wiring, to figure out how exactly I want to lay it out and get it uh, nice and clean. Um, I did a last minute change on how my uh, cable ties here are functioning. Um, instead of using an angled mount that puts them up next to the side of the transmission, I ended up using mounts on the chassis um, and doing a lay flat on this plate. Um, but as far as routing some of the other stuff, I gotta decide exactly how I, where I want to mount the ESC. It definitely looks like it wants to live right here. Um, and I need to figure out what I did with my uh, sensor cable adapter for my Mamba Micro so that I can actually connect my sensor cable. 
Um, I think my external back is going to live back here still in this box while my receiver is up in this box. Um, the winch control unit is a TBD. You'll have to tune in to, the, uh, to a future video to see what I'm going to do with the winch controller. Um, that's definitely will be coming up really quick because I have an event that I want to run this this weekend. Um, so, and I want the winch functioning for that. Um, so yeah, anyways, this is, oh, and I didn't get the drive shafts. Let's throw the drive shafts in real quick so I can show you what that looks like. And we'll find out if I have any other issues. Um, so I'm using SSD, we'll pop over to this camera. I'm using SSD scale universal drive shafts. I've used these a number of different times. This one's actually a, uh, lightly used drive shaft that was in this previously for a little bit. And then I got a matching shorter shaft and uh, you'd be surprised to know the shorter shaft is actually going to go in the rear. Uh, the longer one is for the front. So let's get these thrown into the chassis real quick and look at those uh, drive shaft angles. Oh, electronics everywhere. All right. Ooh, I might see a problem with the rear. Oh, buddy. Yep, I think I do. I don't think the rear is going to make it. I have less clearance there than I anticipated. Oh, it goes on. Oh, and it spins. We. Okay, and I'll end up pulling these back out and putting Loctite on these as well. So. Don't sweat. Those of you who are big on Loctite, I am too. Um, but this is definitely isn't a final assembly. Um, but yeah, there it is. The rear drive shaft is in and it rotates just fine. Doesn't, doesn't hit that electronics tray at all. Granted, there is a... Uh, you might be able to get a piece of paper in there. It is definitely a tight fit. Um, the tray could always be spaced up off the chassis using a couple of uh, half mil washers and gain a little bit of space that way or a different spacer or ditch that tray all together for something else um, which probably isn't a terrible idea there's plenty of options out there that function that can serve that function without giving any of the clearance issues that I've run into come on there we go all right rear drive shaft is in Let's see if we can get the front up in there. That one I will actually... Oh, oh got to take the set screw out first. Whenever possible, I always do everything I can to make sure I use these uh, pin style screws for the drive shafts. Uh, they work way better than the set screws. You can make actual set screws work, and I have done it uh, plenty of times. And it's just these pin style are much more reliable. So I'm having an interference issue here, but it's with something that only probably exist on my truck which is a mount bracket for that front half of the scale exhaust that was on here before so we'll just get that out of the way like I said that's something I'll have to figure out at a later date um, now we should be able to finish wiggling that drive shaft into place oh yeah not a problem in there we go front drive shaft is in get this flipped over this 
tuck this one right in there for now. Maybe up here. stay right there okay and I'll get the, I'll just get the model micro out of the way so it's not dangling around all right guys here's the close-up look the VFD setup is in the truck everything fits in there nicely my suspension still cycles no issues at all with a link suspension and an axle that comes up higher and everything up in the front, it's actually got it's a much tighter fit. Uh, but in this one, it's uh, no problems at all. Everything's looking good. It shouldn't take too much other than figuring out some uh, routing for my wiring and cleaning that up. Uh, this should be a uh, good to go. So, uh, yeah. Until next one, make sure you tune in for the finished product of how this gets laid out and to see how I uh, set up the winch because um, I think you're going to want to know how I do that. It's going to be super useful for things you might just have laying around. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Hit that subscribe if you want to uh, get notified or whatever. Or if you like my videos, please hit that like. Show me that you like them. Show everybody else that they uh, are worth watching. And if you really want to show this to somebody, don't be afraid to share the video. I don't care. Put it out there. Make sure everybody sees it. Um, yeah. And until next time, have fun on the trail.